Hello everyone, this is Noble H. Mushtaq, and today we are here with another main association of math leaks problem from March 2013, meet 5, round 3, problem 3, circles and spheres. So this is the actual round as you would see in competition. As you can see, there's more space as there are in regular rounds because this is a geometry round. So try to see if you can solve all three problems within 12 minutes, or maybe just the first two. Okay, so today we are doing problem 3. They give us this drawing, and in the drawing, PT is a tangent with length 6. PB is a second passing through point D on the circle. AT is a chord intersecting with PB at C. If PD is 3, DC is 4, CT is squared 13, find the distance from BD to the center of the circle. Okay, so from BD to the center of the circle, what do we need to know to find that? We need to know the radius of the circle, and we need to know the length of BD. Using those two things, we can find that distance. So first, to make this easier, let's just label all of the sides. So these are all of the sides we know. And then I've added PC equals 7, because if you add PD and DC, you get 7. The first thing that you should really notice is that... We have this tangent segment, and we have this secant segment coming off of the same point. And because of that, we can use our tangent secant length theorems to find the length of PB. And then, if we say PB is P 7 plus BC, we can use that to find BC. And that'll give us, an own, that'll give us another side to work with. So we have PD times PB, that's this whole secant, equals PT squared, which is the tangent squared. So PD is 3, PB is 7 plus BC, and PT is 6. 6 squared is 36. Divide both sides by 3, and we get 7 plus BC equals 12. That gives us BC is 5. So we get this diagram. I've just labeled 5 on BC. The next thing we have to notice is that we have two intersecting chords, which means we can use our chord chord length theorem to find AC, which gives us another side to work with. So we have AC times CT, AC times CT equals BC times CD, BC times CD, okay? And we substitute AC times square root of 13 equals 4 times 5, 4 times 5 is 20, divide both sides by square root of 13, you should get 20 over square root of 13. And then I've labeled that on the diagram. And we now know BD, since we have both BC and CD. So BD equals 9. So how do we find the radius? Now that we found all of the sides on this diagram. Well, at this point, I was stuck, personally, because they never gave us what the center of the circle is, so we don't really know where the center is. So, how are we supposed to find the radius without the center? So, after this, I was really stuck for a long time. So, uh, when I'm stuck on a problem for a long time, I look at the information I haven't used yet in the problem statement. So, I went back. Okay. Um, We've used tangent secant, and we've used chord chord. So, we've used the fact that it's tangent, we've used the fact that it's secant. So at this point, I'm really stuck because it looks like we've used all of the information in the problem statement. Okay, so I'm not exactly sure how I noticed this or how I'm supposed to explain this to you, but after a really long time at looking at this problem, like a few minutes at, mo like at least, um, I noticed that because PT is a point of tangency, the center is going to be um, on a radius, because the radius, radii always come from the center, and radii are perpendicular to tangent segments. So if we can find a right angle using PT, uh, we can find a diameter or a radius. So the only angle in w involving PT in this diagram is angle CTP. 
So how can we check if CTP is a right angle? The answer to that is the um, we use the converse Pythagorean theorem. So what we do is that we oh, we look at the squares of each of the sides, so PT squared is 36, CT is square root 13, so that squared is 13, PC is 7, so that squared is 49. And then I noticed that PT squared plus CT squared equals PC squared, and that only happens in right triangles. So that means PC has to be a hypotenuse, so the angle opposite that, which is angle CTP, is a right angle. Okay. So now that we found the right angle, the right angle is right here, and that means the chord coming off of that right angle, coming off the tangent segment, is a diameter. So AT is a diameter. That's that was really confusing to me because the di and I'm gonna just I've drawn in the right angle just to emphasize this. This does not look like a right angle at all, but it is. And AT does not look like a diameter at all, but it is. So. This is just a really confusing diagram, obviously, and they, I think they were trying to confuse us. So that's, I think, that's the hardest part of this problem, figuring out that AT is actually the diameter of the circle. So hopefully you can understand how triangle PCT is a right triangle with hypotenuse PC because of the Pythagorean theorem, and that makes AT a diameter. So 33 over square root 13 is our diameter. So the radius is half of that, so it's 33 over 2 squared 13. And then finally we have radius and we have BD. So now we can find the distance from BD to the center. And the way I'm going to do that is because this diagram is so bad, I'm going to redraw the circle. So I've gotten rid of everything except BD, which is 9, and then I've put, said the center was O. And then the radius is 33 over 2 squared 13. That's OB. And then to find the distance, it's a perpendicular line from the center to the line to the to the chord. So I've done O. I've drawn OM. This is a right angle, and um, because this is an isosceles triangle, OB equals OD since they're both radii. The altitude. This is an altitude bisects the base. The base is BD, so that means BM is half of BD, which is 9 halves. So BM is 9 halves. And then we have this right triangle. What we want to find is OM. So we can find OM using the Pythagorean theorem. So OM squared plus BM squared equals OB squared. OM squared plus 9 halves squared equals 33 over 2 squared, 13 squared. And then the squaring this is kind of complicated, so I've done it in points. 33 squared is 1089. You can just do that on paper. Multiply that out. And then 2 squared, 13 squared. This is where you have to be careful because you might think, oh, that's just 2 times 13. But it's actually 2 squared times 13, which is 4 times 13, which is 52. So make sure you don't get a mistake there. And then 9 half squared is 81 fourths, obviously. And then 1089 over 52 for uh, OB squared. So I subtract both sides by 81 fourths to isolate OM squared. And then at this point, we need to convert 81 fourths into a fraction with a denominator of 52. Since um, the LCM of 52 and 4 is 52. So to do that, we multiply 81 fourths by 13 over 13, which is um, 1053 over 52. So 81 times 13 is 1053. Again, you just do that on paper. And then we substitute. So we get 1089 over 52 minus 1053 over 52. 1089 minus 1053 is 36. So we get 36 over 52, and that's OM squared. So at this point, we take the square root of both sides, and you should get 6 over... And the square root of 52 is the 2 square root of 13. Since before, we said that 2 square root of 13 squared was 52. And then we cancel out the 2s from both sides of the fraction. So we get 3 over square root of 13. And then finally, you have to simplify that by multiplying by square root of 13 over square root of 13. And then we that's called rationalizing the denominator. And finally, we get 3 square root of 13 all over 13. And that's our final answer. This is our final simplified answer. And yeah, that's it. So, um, 
I hope you weren't too confused by that problem. The real trick is figuring out that you have to do this. I just figured this out by basically... I was stuck, so I was thinking about it for a while. But, yeah, that this is the only way I know how to solve the problem, by using the converse Pythagorean theorem on triangle PCT. And I don't know how you're supposed to notice that. It's not really obvious, but it's just something I noticed. So if you have a more obvious way to do this problem, please tell me in the comments. I'd like answers without trig, just because... I feel like it'll get too complicated if you use trig. I'm not exactly sure how you would use trig in this problem. I just feel like there's a trigonometry answer. But if there is a trigonometry answer, I would definitely be interested in that too. I just like a more simple answer to this problem, since I just noticed this by chance. It's not really a pattern that I've seen in any other problem. So, yeah. So that's how you figure this problem out. And I hope that this teaches you a new technique for other math problems, because the, te the technique here is the converse Pythagorean theorem. So hopefully you can use that in other math problems. And have fun doing math.